Hi everyone, I'm back with a video. Um, it's going to be a special box opening video. And so I thought I'd have my three favorite gals along here. Oh boy, sorry about that. I have a cat who's just, again, trying to disrupt my show here. Anyway, um, I'm hoping I'm, I'll be able to get through this. Um, but I um, wanted to have these gals here with me uh, because this bo box opening is gonna be a rather special box opening. And um, I thought I'd reintroduce some of my um, lies to you. This is my Raven Medieval Mood. She is an original Kenner Blythe, and I've had her in my collection for well over 25 years now. And this is um, my uh, Pretty in Paisley, and she is also an original Kenner Blythe. And she too came into my life around the same time. So you know, over 25 years I've had her in my collection. And the redhead, who is Love and Lace, she's an Ashton Drake, and I got her the original run when Ashton Drake um, started releasing her in 2004. So they've been in my collection for quite some time. Um, my beautiful medieval, uh, medieval mood, I um, used to do a lot of estate sailing and... Um, thrift store buying uh, back in the day and more so than now anyway I, at the time you know I was always looking for another doll I was always looking for you know crazy dolls that I can't even tell you now because my, my collection is rather you know large and so at the time I was just looking for other dolls and I happened upon an ad where an older woman was getting rid of all of her dolls and she basically opened up her home and I was there at a great time but there was another gal there who was beating everybody to everything I mean she when I tell you she had crates and crates full of vintage dolls um, it was true and this gal just was buying up everything from Mrs. Beasley dolls to old um, Madame Alexander and briquettes and all kinds of things so lo and behold this little medieval mood was all by herself and the girl you know I just wanted to get away from her because she was just like a, a tornado and they're getting everything you could think of and I just wanted to go as far to the other end of the doll um, section to just kind of get away from her you know um, picking there and I found this lovely little gal and at the time you know I didn't think much of her I just wanted to grab her because she just had this really beautiful little forlorn look to her and honestly I do remember these dolls in the 70s um, back in 72 when they came out I remember them and you know I vaguely remember holding them and playing with them but you know not anything other than that I was really always a Barbie girl Dawn doll Kittles that kind of a thing but she really was on the later scale of my growing up and so um, I just, you know, loved her, but I didn't really think much of anything of it. So when I got her at that estate sale, I paid $10 for her. She's got her original underwear, she has her original shoes, but I took the shoes off because if you're familiar with them, they tend to melt on the feet. So I took off her shoes. She's beautiful, no cracks in her body. Her hair, however, is a little, you know, coarse, and that's to be expected, but it's not missing anything. It's, it's, it's beautiful other than it being like, you know, a Brillo pad now with all this age. And the same could be said with my um, beautiful Kenner, um, Pretty and Paisley. She is another one that I found at a flea market. And she came with all her original stuff. She's got her original shoes and everything. And those two are taken off and removed to keep from melting. And I spent $15 on her which even then I can't even believe it. I was just like oh well fine you know oh, yeah she's cute and uh, my sister came in for a visit um, sometime later I you know I want to say like later in the 90s and um, we were looking at this shop that I absolutely loved and they had all beautiful vintage dolls of every kind you can imagine and I kid you not when I tell you that they had original Kenner Kenner original 1972 Kenner Blythe's mint in box mint in box and some of them were loose with their little carrying cases and all the clothes and wigs that were mint in box with the sunglasses and the combs 
and I can't believe it. I'm kicking myself now because we completely overlooked those dolls. The owner of the shop kept saying, oh, you ladies, you've got to look at these dolls. They're just so cute. And I was like, yeah, you know, I have a couple of them. It's, it's, it's fine. We're looking, and I can't even tell you. I think I was looking for rock flower, Mattel rock flowers at the time. I wasn't really even paying attention. Um, and now I'm totally kicking myself because after Gina Guerin or Guerin came out, and this was like in 2000, so it was only just a couple of short years later that she came out with that um, This Is Blythe book, and she started photographing all the Blythe dolls. And let me tell you, those Blythe dolls were tore up. They were missing hair. They were just a mess. But she photographed them beautifully. She was a New York uh, photographer, artist. She's still around. I still follow her. And she had come out with that book, which I did purchase at the time of the first release of that book back in the 2000s. And I couldn't believe the photography of those dolls. And I was like, wow, this is really something. I mean, knowing that I had my girls already and, you know, I thought never to photograph them like that. But what a great idea. And it wasn't shortly after that that Kenner, um, or rather um, Ashton Drake had come out, I think 2004, like I said, when I got her 2005 that they did their re-release based on the popularity of Gina Guerin's book, This is Blythe, and how it blew up and created a frenzy, especially like in Japan and Tokyo and all that. And even though um, Takara seems to say that they had been producing their Blythe uh, back in 2001, I, I honestly believe, yeah, that it was uh, all because of uh, Gina Guerin's book and the popularity and the frenzy that she caused with these Blythe dolls. So these are the dolls that I had that were in their original outfits. They were pretty much the core girls. But I had one gal that I was always missing of the four core collection. And that wasn't including the Ashton Drake. You know, they, they um, did all, they released all the dolls um, in their um, succinct outfits, like all the different outfits that Kenner had produced originally for Blythe that were just accessories or you know, the dolls ne never actually came out in those outfits because this doll, the, the Kenner dolls, only ran for a year, and that was it. And they were invented by a gal named Allison Katzman, and she got the idea because her daughter had gotten contact lenses, and the contact lens coloring was a little off, and they made the eyes like super, like a crazy color. And so that's how she got the idea to do the eye color mechanism which I found was really interesting because the company that she got to design the eye mechanism Marvin Glass and Associates their toy studio is based here in Chicago where I'm from and so um, I think that's why I used to see a lot of these dolls at the time and thought nothing of it which now like I say I kick myself in the pants about all the time but nevertheless um, that that doll and that history changed so much and it really changed the way people I think looked at the doll buying the doll you know I never for once thought she was creepy I'm okay with the pink eyes I don't like changing the eyes too much even though the IMAX work perfectly on my older Kenners I don't like handling them too too much because I'm fearful of just hurting them even even my um my beautiful uh Ashton Drake here she is an old gal considering that she was produced in 2000 for 2000 so she's like what 17 now that's an old doll so I've noticed that she too she's doing a lot more shedding and things like that so I just really try to leave them as they are but back to the point of this video um, I wanted to add one more beauty I, I have these also these little cute little um, these are Kaido little um, bite Blythe Bells and they're just so cute this one is the uh, so very berry this one is Kitty Clown, and this one is Bear Hug, and they're just cute little Blythe dolls that you sometimes find, but other fun little companions for them. But anyway, let me get back to this box uh, that I have here. Let me see if I can do this in such a way without showing too, too, too much. It is, let me see here, came all the way from, um, Rome, Italy. Let me see if I can get that in there. Anyway, Rome, Italy. So this special box here 
and it's got a lot of packing on it, a lot of bubble wrap, so I kind of already pre-opened it in a way that I would easier be able to get this out. But as you can see, let me see here. This is an Ashton Drake box. And this gal too has been in her box. And this Ashton Drake box since 2005, 2004, 2005. And here she is, the last of my core four girls. I love, love, love this box. Let me see if I can show this off in such a way here. Excuse me, excuse my camera. Let's see if I can do this. There's her beautiful Blythe box. Love, love, love that Paisley 70s detail. What does that say there? Quick as a wink, pull the ring back and see my eyes change color and expression. And let me see. Bear with me. I just love the box art for her. Just love it. And it tells a little bit about the story there in 1972. And it's got the Hasbro logo there. I just am so pleased with her. So let me see if I can... I mean, the whole point was trying to get her out and put her with her mates here. So let's see if I can do this. Just bear with me for a moment. And as I said, I am going to um, take the shoes off of her because I really um, don't want to have those melted on here. Here is her original stand. And oops. Let's see if I can do it this way. No, I don't think she's going to show up. Hold on. And here she is. Her hair is so, so beautiful. Still so soft. And check her eye mic. brilliant and the orange that looks so well with her outfit so there she is this is my beautiful gorgeous golden goddess and they refer to her as a brunette and the medieval mood as a raven and yes let me see if I can bring my medieval raven close up so you can see the difference in the hair and the raven is definitely darker than the brunette which I'm glad now so I have all four core girls now and um, let me see You know, I could be very tempted to leave her in her little um, 
box, but I think she's been in there suffering for too long as it is. Oh wow, this really goes up the leg, these plastic baggies here. And yes, even with the um, Ashton Drake, you still have to be careful with them cracking and that kind of jazz. So I um, definitely will try to be mindful of that. And um, as I say, I'm gonna slip off these shoes. They are feeling a little squishy, a little rubbery. Oops, I'm hoping that's not melted on there already. No, it hasn't, thankfully. Okay. I honestly think that these stands also um, help spread their legs apart so much so that they would sometimes, you know, feel like they're about ready to crack. But anyway, this is my, my new core four here of the Blythes. And... Um, if I can get them to look good there. And I'm so glad to have these four girls together now. I'm really, really happy about that. And so if I ever come across up any of the extra outfits, I believe there were 12 dolls in total that Ashton Drake made of the reproduction dolls. And honestly, the reproductions are um, just as pretty as my original Kenner Blythe. Um, they're not as glossy, however, you see that they do have shiny faces. These dolls are nowhere near as glossy faced as the Takara dolls that come out now, or for that matter, the factory blice that are made. But um, their color seems to be a little bit more um, dark. But I just, I'm so, so happy to have this golden goddess here joining my team of girls. And I so appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell as I will be opening up new dolls here from time to time on my channel. I thank you so very much and hope to see you and your dolls soon. Bye.